One of the exciting things about Tiny Tape Out 6 is we've added support for analog and mixed signal design as well as designs made by proprietary tools. That's because every design now is power gated, so even if you submitted a complete short circuit, it wouldn't take down the whole chip. What I'm going to show you in this video is how you can get started with a mixed signal design or an analog design, and I'm going to be using the magic VLSI tool, but you could use K-Layout or any proprietary tool you want. And uh, I'm going to be taking you through the steps to make a very simple design, in this case, an R2R digital to analog converter. I'm not going to spend any time on the schematic drawing, the simulation, the parasitic extraction, the LVS. I'm just going to show you the flow that you need to do to actually get a design ready to submit. So let's start off by taking a look at the website. At the moment, everything is on this tech specs analog pins page. And there's a bit of information here about how many pins you can have, the specifications and limitations. Uh, biggest ones is limited to 1.8 volts and you can't use metal five. We supply some templates that you can get started with. Um, all the normal digital pins are on the top and the analog pins are at the bottom. You must have two power ports and they've got to be named correctly on metal four. Uh, they both need to have the same width, but there's some variants uh, you're allowed in there. And then the pricing, because we're only allowing analog on the top and the bottom of the chip, and we've only got eight pins, we're charging $40 per pin. Okay, so let's move on for actually creating and submitting an analog design. So we're gonna go to the template repository just like for digital designs, and you use this template button and call it something sensible or ridiculous, up to you. And then we just download this, clone it onto your workstation. Unlike the digital flow, pretty much all of this has to be done locally. And I'm just gonna start off by making a mag for magic GDS and LEF directories. Now you've got to pick a template. The minimum size is one by two, uh, but we also have bigger ones if you want bigger ones. Bigger ones cost more. And we're just gonna get this template. I download it with wget, paste that in there. So now I've got my def file. And the next step is editing the info.yaml file. You want to pick a unique name for the top level and then you need to be consistent with it. And you also got to have title, author and description, otherwise the documentation check will fail. Good idea to label your inputs. We don't have any digital outputs and we're not using bi-directional, but we are using this one analog pin and we'll delete the other one. Only the pins you list here will actually be connected. And then edit the Verilog stub, just got to match the name basically. And then we need some documentation here. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm not gonna spend time on the all the details of doing an analog design. I've linked some resources. We're gonna use, I'm gonna use magic to draw this out. And I'm going to get started by using this tickle script. Which basically reads the, de the def template that you've downloaded and then uses that to create the top level cell and then draws the power and ground lines and writes out the first uh, GDS and LEF. Uh, 
So a startup magic, uh, got to use its correct RC file and make sure that matches with the PDK. Uh, if things are working, you'll have the palette on the right and it will say Sky 130 technology in the top. If those aren't there, then you've got a problem with your install that needs to get sorted first. And then we can run all those commands by sourcing that tickle script. So if you're not using magic, you just need to make sure that what happens with this tickle script happens in your tool. But basically, it's just creating these two power straps and naming the design. And up here on the top, we've got our inputs and down on the bottom, we've got our analog pins. And that is the ground pin. And that's the power pin. So now I've sped this bit up a lot. So you're not bored by my terrible magic skills. And if you want to learn how to use magic or K layout, then check some of the resources listed in the analog pins page I showed earlier. And that's that for the schematic. So I need to export the GDS on the left now. Just copy and paste that into the tickle window. Not sure if it did the GDS, so repeat that. And then check out the new files. We've got the GDS, we've got the LEF. Take a look at the LEF. It's all the pins. Use K layout as an alternative GDS viewer. Sanity check. And then add everything. push that to our repo and then in the repo we can check the actions which will be running now so I'll speed this up it takes a few minutes and we run a GDS check basically check that the DRC is fine before we accept your submission so you can just take a look at that by clicking on here and scrolling down DRC K layout And then we're going to make a new submission. So I'm going to app.tinytapeout.com. Ignore that staging in the URL. That's just for me to do this test. Create the project. Pay for it. Submit it. And now we're on the we reserved our space, but we need to actually submit a new revision to put it on which does that by creating a pull request. And there we go, success. So that's a very brief overview of how to get started with an analog or mixed signal design. If you get stuck anywhere, then reach out to us on the analog channel in the Discord. And I really look forward to seeing some more mixed signal and analog designs on Tiny Tape Out 6. So good luck and let us know how you get on.